See, I never thought the Turbo Lister was even usable, really. What's going on, everybody? It's Manny, and I am back with another video. It has been requested, and it is now time to talk about Turbo Lister listing software. I know that some of you have been talking about some of the advances in Turbo Lister, but I'm still surprised at how many Scoutly users are not taking advantage of it. Before I get started, I have to be perfectly honest with you. This was a video that I never imagined making about a year and a half ago. See, I never really considered Turbo Lister to be very good at all or even really usable until a seller tool started focusing on it and making a priority of it to make it a really powerful lister. But ever since about the spring of 2018, you could really tell what kind of priority they were putting on it by the monthly or bi-monthly updates and fixes that they were putting into the software. They were obviously putting a lot of development time into it and really starting to uh, make it a very sleek uh, lister. And that's what today is all about. I want to show you how I was able to take my private mode listing and really replicate it in Turbo Lister from start to finish, from the time that I'm listing uh, to the time that I'm labeling uh, to the time that I am setting up shipments, uh, the holding bin, uh, printing out the shipping labels, box contents, everything can now be done in Turbo Lister without very much uh, time spent outside of the software. But instead of taking all this time to really talk about it, I think it's going to be way more valuable if I show you on a screen share exactly how to uh, navigate the software and what's so good about it. Okay. Show me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of books that I got laying around that are either going to be duds or they're going to be books that I wish I could send to Amazon, but I found some sort of a flaw, like a stain or something really uh, messed up condition-wise in the book. So I'm going to take these books and I'm going to go ahead and list them and I'm going to show you a tour and I'm going to replicate the private mode that I have always used in Turbo Lister. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I am in Turbo Lister, and if you don't have an open batch, it will bring you to the batch screen and ask you to create a new batch before you get started. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. You hit create a new batch, and then from here, you just have to uh, select how it is you normally do things. You can choose to change the name. I don't know that I ever really have. Uh, if I was ever working multiple uh, batches at one time where I want to keep certain categories separate from others, I would certainly do that. Uh, but if I'm just working through one batch at a time, there's no need for that. Uh, SKU prefix, this is your custom SKU. Uh, if I'm listing books, I go ahead and I put in what is my uh, typical custom SKU right there. Uh, you choose whether you're going to label your product or whether Amazon will. You're going to choose your box content method, which right now is currently only 2D barcode if you do it through uh, Turbo Lister. Uh, but coming soon will be the feeds where you're able to send the feed directly to Amazon. Uh, and then ultimately, whether you want to do live workflow or whether you want to go private workflow. Uh, I'm demonstrating uh, the ability to replicate my uh, previous private workflow into Turbo Lister, so I'm going to keep it here. Uh, just another helpful tip, if you are looking to uh, prevent unnecessary splits, uh, you want no part of live workflow. You really only want to work through private workflow. But if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, they will give you the pros and cons of each specific type. Uh, they will tell you the positives and negatives of live workflow versus private workflow. This right here is just about perfect for me, so I'm going to go ahead and create this batch. Okay, and this is the main screen, and uh, before I go any further, I'm just going to give you a basic tour of the surroundings. Uh, you're going to have the ability to choose the workflow that works correctly for you. Uh, with this one here, you're going to be able to turn on and off uh, manual pricing versus setting a default price, which you enter the value there. Here, you're able to turn off uh, entering condition notes yourself versus using the default condition notes, which you can set in the uh, notes part of the menu. Uh, if I turn this on, notice how all of my 
uh, pre-written condition notes disappear and with every listing I will be entering uh, the condition notes as I go. So for private workflow, uh, maximum speed, we turn on default price and we turn off conditioning as we go so that we use our boilerplate condition notes. Uh, your quantities are here. Uh, if you're going to use your zebras, dimos, or rolos, uh, your printer would be turned on here versus turned off if you plan on using 30 up labels through Seller Central. Uh, now, as far as printers go, I will show you the, the menu so that you can see where you can select your printer settings, run a test, all of those good things. And here, as you are listing, you can select your particular conditions. Uh, if I was to start with acceptable and work my way up, you're gonna notice that the highlighted conditions have changed and all I have to do is turn them off and you'll notice how they all disappeared here. I would just leave on the one that I'm currently going to use and right now anything that I scan will be listed at that default price that current uh, cost of goods and will be assigned that condition note. We're going to get back to this in a minute because I have set some books aside that are either duds or something in the condition was found that makes them unsellable on Amazon. So I will be giving you some examples. But before I do any of that, I really want to show you the rest. And I'm going to start over here. Uh, we'll get to this one later, the holding bin. Uh, a lot of confusion about how this works, especially with Amazon's new policies. So I will demonstrate it and I will show you how it is in uh, unison with Amazon's uh, shipment policies. Uh, also, your menu here. This is where you're going to uh, create a lot of the things up front and save you the time as you list. Let me go ahead and click this here. Uh, you, this is your menu set up here. Uh, the first one is settings. I'm not going to click on this one uh, because there's a lot of really sensitive information in there. User ID, password, uh, your seller ID is going to be in there, your mailing address. But the one thing that I want you to know about settings is that if you do both FBA and Merchant Fulfilled, settings is where you're going to want to go to toggle between the fulfillment method. So just remember that settings is pretty much... Uh, something that I don't go into anymore, but if, what, but if you're going to list some merchant fulfilled items and you want to switch from FBA, that's where you're going to go. Uh, the next one is SKU settings real quick. I want to show you this because your prefix, the prefix that we entered at the beginning of the batch, which is also over here, you can also display it. And let's say you need to change it halfway through. Uh, you have a different custom SKU. You can always change it as you list. It's not something that's permanent. You can click in there and change it. Your prefix is always going to be first in your SKU. That's not changeable. If it has down arrows and up arrows, that means that you can move it up as far as what happens next in your uh in your prefix as far as your uh, your SKU goes. Uh, the next thing that I've got listed is the suffix. Every time that you list a book, the, uh, the suffix is here. This moves up by one. So I scan the first one, the next one's going to be two, and then three, four, five. And it's a sequence is what it is. So this number sequence, if nothing else changes in the SKU that you have selected, the suffix will constantly move up by one to prevent any SKU from ever being a duplicate SKU. And then I've chosen the typical things that I would like to have in a uh, very effective SKU. The month, the day, the cost of goods, the condition. And this one here is super important and a really nice hack when it comes to manual repricing after the fact. The number of days with sales, uh, whether it's, whether it's something that you know as days with sales, sales count, or e-score, I always put at the very end of my SKU. Now, the reason why I do that is because I list with a default price, but I do go back and I set the initial price myself before the book goes live. In order to do so, I want to do things as quickly as possible. So if I go in there and I've got that days with sale built into my SKU, what don't I really have to do? 
I don't really have to check Keepa very often, if at all. So that makes it so much faster for me to use my nifty split and redirector combo and have the days with sales right on the same page. I can literally click into the FBA page, look at the days with sales, and already have a formula in my head for where I want to be in position as far as FBA uh, listings. Uh, so keep in mind, I use the days with sales because that's the sort of information that's going to help me make very fast pricing decisions. So this is what your SKU format looks like, and this is the example that they have set for me here. Uh, if you're happy with that, you go ahead and you hit save. Next up is the printer menu, and you can choose between your FBA labels versus your ticket uh, printing if you're doing uh, storage yourself for merchant fulfilling. You're going to choose your printer, your paper size, and uh, your auto print yes or no. I leave the printer on. You can run a test print just to make sure everything is good. One thing I am going to tell you folks, from this software in this screen, I have not had issues with connectivity of my Dymo ever. So just so you know, uh, you can just come in here, you can change your paper sizes depending on what you do, and then you hit save or you run a test print just to make sure everything is good to go. Another really valuable one here is your minimum and maximum prices. You can go in there and set your minimum and maximum prices, your minimum price really low, your max price really high uh, to avoid as many pricing errors as possible. Uh, the last one here is going to be your notes. This is where you're going to go in and you're going to create your uh, pre-written condition notes if you want to go that route. Assign the condition that you want the note to pop up with. Uh, you can even assign categories. You'll have different uh, condition notes for the categories that you choose to differentiate. So it'll knock off a bunch of these and you'll see different condition notes when you click on a different category. Super helpful stuff. But since I have everything set up the way that I normally list, uh, including the first book is going to be an acceptable book. I'm going to have two former library books, and the rest of them are just going to be good with my typical uh, good condition note. I don't need very many books to show you basically how this works, so I'm just going to have about seven or eight books uh, so that I can demo this out for you. Uh, one last thing up here. You're going to see a basic idea of the number of SKUs, the number of items if you have multiples, and the weight. So this should all help out. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click out of this menu here. I'm going to click into this Enter ISBN or UPC box. And all you have to do is start scanning product in. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with an acceptable book. And I'm going to let this go through because I want to show you uh, what the screen is going to look like and what you can expect. Now, as you heard, uh, the printer printed out my FNSQ label, and down here you can see an image of the book. Uh, even though we go very, very fast, I always recommend you slow down for one second, make sure your product image is, is correct. If there are any issues at all where you just want to double check for accuracy or maybe some, it looks like it might be incorrect, just take your, uh, your mouse and hover over the image. And this box is going to pop up. It's going to give you the title, the category, the ASIN. Uh, it's also going to uh, show you what the condition note was, the condition, and your default price and the weight. Uh, that is super valuable because if something is incorrect, the image looks off, the image is different, uh, a completely different product pops up, which I don't know that I've ever had happen, but I guess it in theory it could, uh, you're going to want to see what's going on. When you hover over it, you're also going to have the ability to uh, delete what you just uh, scanned in to remove it from the batch. The, you can reprint a label here, and it can be a little tough to see, but this little edit uh, note button here, you can click it if you need to change the condition note slightly. You can't change the condition, but you can certainly... Uh, edit what it is that you're putting as far as the actual uh, condition note. You can make your changes and when you're done you can just hit OK. Any changes that you put into your condition note will have been changed. And now that I've explained that to you I can go ahead and I can list the rest of these books. Starting with these two former library books I can turn off all of these condition notes. All I've got left is my former library uh, condition note. Let's go ahead and uh, Let's go ahead and list these things. Okay, I got
got those listed. I could turn that off and I could turn on my regular one to do the rest of them. Now the whole time I am stacking these and I am keeping them in the exact order that I list them because here's what I'm not doing for the sake of speed. I'm not labeling each one as I go. The important thing to know is that I'm letting my, uh, my labels just hang off the printer. If I keep the books in the same, uh, in the same exact order, obviously the labels are all still hanging off the printer. So there's no need to worry. And you would just continue in the same exact way uh, for all the books that you need to list. I feel this is very simple, but absolutely extremely powerful and very comparable to a bunch of other listers out there. The only difference is this actually is free and it's included with your, uh, with your Scoutly subscription. So uh, you're able to replicate a really nice workflow. Uh, the next step that I need to figure out is where all this stuff is going to go. So once you've listed all your stuff... You're going to want to come up here and you'll want to click the ship button. So after you click the ship buttons, it takes a couple of seconds. It doesn't take very long at all, but the system will give you a preview of the book along with the fulfillment center that is most likely going to be the one that uh, you are asked to send the book to. Now, I want to say something very important. The way that it is set up in Turbo Lister, this is not a shipment yet. This is just a preview. And in no way, shape, or form are you required to send these books to them yet. Uh, what you can do is this. Now, of course, I don't have any splits here. But I can show you what the holding bin works like. If you had multiple uh destinations if you had splits here what you would do is you would select one let's say for example this was the destination that was undesirable I have no interest whatsoever in sending these books out to Amazon the only thing that I have to do is select that fulfillment center and hit holding bin you're going to notice that those books are now no longer in your preview. Those books are all here. Here's what that means. If I had another destination that I wanted things to go to, I could select that destination here under preview shipments and create that shipment without those books ever being in the way, without those books ever being something that Amazon even knows about. So while Amazon's policies have changed and they have become a lot stricter as far as deleting items or deleting shipments, uh, the holding bin is an exceptional tool for you to still be able to uh, make things work for your business. The only catch is that you have to use the holding bin on the undesirable locations first. And whenever you do that, it's going to shuffle the deck all over again. Those destinations that are left for those other ones could potentially change. Now, let's say, for example, I made a mistake and I needed to add those back. The holding bin is so versatile that I can just come back over here to add. I can go back to my add screen, click the holding bin, select all those books at once using this box here, and then add them to the batch. They're all right back where they started, no harm, no foul, and I can hit the ship button again. You see how that works? The holding bin is absolutely seamless with what is going on in your batch. Highly effective, uh, saves you all the time in the world. Now, if you were going to be happy with this, if you're going to create the shipment, you're going to select that, and you're going to hit Create Shipment. I really don't want to do that because, as I said, these are not books that are really saleable on Amazon, either because they're duds or because they're damaged in some way. But all you would have to do is hit Create Shipment, and at that point, you are sending the feed to Amazon. At that point, it is too late to start playing with the shipments because at that point, you would be violating their shipping policy. So now, once you create this shipment, if you want to see where, where it's at as far as the feed goes, you would click on Feed. 
in feed, the top one, I'm assuming, would be the one that's being sent to Amazon. And this would say pending. Once Amazon receives the feed, if it's all good, it's just going to go to completed like this. But there are going to be times where it's going to say failed, and it's going to let you know that there is an error. What you're going to be able to do is click on that hyperlink for failed, and if there's, for example, a book that you're gated in, a popular textbook, uh, a, a, a book that is uh, gated because of uh, the ASIN, for example, just, you know, one of those one-offs, it's going to let you know that so that you don't send gated materials to Amazon. So it's also really good at making sure that you're not sending stuff that you're going to see hit stranded inventory and you're just going to have to have removed in the first place. So it won't let you do that. So that is another benefit of Turbo Lister. And of course, once you're done, you can uh, go into Seller Central and you can complete everything you need to do as far as shipping and you can pay for it and all that and when you go to print your box labels in uh, Amazon if you wanna print your shipping labels out here through Turbo Lister instead of printing at Amazon just save it as uh, as Adobe you know, I save all of my uh, my labels and then I come back here I'm gonna go to my ship screen once again and then I'm going to go to print shipping label and that label that I saved in my uh, computer instead of printing I would just drag it into this box and immediately print so turbo lister is completely self-sufficient as a software as far as printing out your product labels as far as sending feeds to Amazon uh, preventing you from having to uh, ship items that are being split that you don't want to send across the country or you know you can actually use the holding bin for that and then once you complete everything in seller central you can even print your shipping labels through turbo lister so it inspired me to go ahead and get a 4xl dymo printer so i can just do everything through here and don't have to mess around with my regular printer anymore so once you're done with printing out your labels uh you can just go ahead and come back to batch and then you can close the batch if you'd like. One more note, you'll also notice that up here it does also offer you uh, the ability to enter box contents and you can uh, certainly print your 2D labels as well uh, right through here. So just another reason to have a 4XL printer, uh, but you can also use any printer that you would like uh, for the purposes of printing out the 2D label. Uh, I uh, I spent quite a bit of time using my regular, my brother uh, laser printer uh, for these labels, but it definitely takes away the pain of box contents, and it definitely will help you to uh, get things done faster. It's also going to prevent you from scanning books in that don't belong with the particular shipment that you're working off of, and it's also going to prevent you from scanning a book that does belong too many times so if you scan a book a second time it won't let you do that it's gonna let you know the quantity is wrong and that really is the basic way that turbo lister works I hope that was helpful I wanted to really illustrate just how quickly I could get my work done and I can honestly say that by using turbo lister I haven't lost any speed whatsoever so there you have it folks I hope that that was a really a good introduction for you if you're not using Turbo Lister. And if you are using Turbo Lister, I hope that this video has offered you a couple of nuggets, uh, perhaps a couple of uh, workflow tips that could really speed you up. Uh, a couple of takeaways for you, though. First things first is make sure you're using that suffix. Uh, I, I place it second for a reason because I can always see the order that the books were listed in. And if I do have splits, one of the important things that I can do is that I can create my stacks of books and I can list them 15 or 20 at a time and keep the keep those stacks the same. So if I list uh, and I have stacks of 15 and I keep it that way, then every stack has 15 books. If I have a couple of splits, the easiest thing to do becomes to look at what suffix it was. And if I see that it's the number 12, it was the 12th book that was listed. So it's gonna be in my first stack. None of this hunting and pecking and where's the book. I'm gonna know by location because I am organized exactly where those books are. So if I do have splits, it's gonna be super easy to separate those books out. It doesn't have to hurt to get it right. One more thing that I don't know if I said 
for you. Uh, I did say that when you send in the feeds, uh, when the feed finalizes, it's either going to show completed or failed. You click on the, uh, the failed hyperlink and it would tell you which books are in question. A lot of the times these books are either going to be missing dimensions or they're just going to be books that you're gated in and can't ship. But the good news is that Turbo Lister stops you from sending those books in and separates them so you don't have a problem at the warehouse. One last thing that I did not mention about that though is that if you have uh, failed for those books, let's say you have two books that you're gated in. Uh, the one thing that Turbo Lister is going to do for you, it will remove those books from the shipment. So you don't have to do anything in Seller Central. It will have already taken them off the shipment for you, and you don't even have to change anything. If it shows failed, you don't really have to resubmit. You don't have to do anything at all. It's already done for you. It's just more of a heads up from Turbo Lister. I also want to reiterate that I do not uh, label every book after I list it. I want to reiterate that I keep my books uh, stacked in stacks of 15 or in stacks of 20 if you prefer, but I keep those stacks the same. What I do is when I once I get to the point where I've got 15 or 20 books stacked and ready to go, then I will flip them back over, I'll pull the 20 uh, labels off the printer and, st and just kind of label them 20 at a time. You can wait until the entire uh, batch is done being listed and do it that way. Uh, but this is faster. I just It's called consolidation of steps. It's something that I used to teach my servers in the restaurant business. If you can take three or four actions and put them together, you don't have to stop in between each one. It will make you faster. It's the same way with labeling. If you're just focused on scanning and scanning, what it's going to do for you, it's going to let you do one action, which will let you build up speed and momentum. And then when you're done with that action, then you can move over to labeling all the books. Once again, once you start labeling, you're going to build up speed and that's overall going to be much faster than scanning the book waiting for the label to come out labeling the book and moving on to the next one this is just consolidation of steps and will make you a much faster lister just remember to keep those books in the same order then you uh, scan them in so that you don't have to worry about whether or not the label goes to the book you'll know it and it's automatic and then I want to highlight that tip that I told you folks about days with sales or sales count. If you put that into your SKU, it's going to help you to uh, price the book later on if it's something that you want to do. I use a nifty split with a redirector combo, and by having that, it's all going to be on the same screen for me. So if I see that a book sells 67 days out of 186 days, then all I have to worry about is what kind of strategy I want to take with a book that sells roughly uh, three times a week. So I would say that overall, uh, Turbo Lister has become a very sleek and very, very powerful listing service that is at least as comparable, if not better than some of the premium listers out there. You're gonna be getting speed with Turbo Lister. You now have the power of using Amazon's API to list in private mode with a very powerful and versatile holding bin and it gives you the ability to print and label all of your items and your boxes directly within the software. And since it's absolutely free with your Scoutly subscription, you just can't beat the value. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, hit that bell. Turning on those bell notifications gives you a heads up every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.